Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Make CC, uh, CCS Disk, a strategy for uh, GPL compliance. Uh, my name is Robert Call. Um, I'm the lead developer of the Libre CMC project. Has um, anyone uh, heard of Libre CMC before? OK, cool. So um, I'll, t I'll get to that in a little bit. Um, I also have been a huge supporter of free software and free culture works. Um, I, in 2011, I did, an intern, I did a campaigns manager internship at the Free Software Foundation. Um, and wherever possible, I try to use uh, free software um, and or uh, cult, uh, uh, art uh, license under a, a you know, free culture uh, license, if you will. Um, the views in this talk are mine and mine alone. They don't reflect uh, the Libri CMC project. Uh, any of my employers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, also, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not trying to give legal advice. Um, uh, and I'm not law your lawyer. Uh, so uh, um, also, um, in terms of licensing, it's a very complex area. Um, I'm mostly just a developer. I'm, I don't, I'm not really a, a, a legal person. Um, so I'm by no means an, an expert. Um, and what I lay out in this talk here um, is mostly just a strategy to try to get companies to be compliant with free software licenses. Um, also, this is the first time that I've given this talk, so it's a little rough around the edges. Um, I mostly worked on the demo that I'll show at near the end, um, so here we go. So um, everyone here knows what free software is, right? Okay, so I can skip over what... When I talk about free software, I'm talking about uh, the, the official free software defi def uh, definition, uh, the four essential freedoms, uh, which I but botched that and I should have fixed that, but okay. Um, so the main scope of this talk is the embedded world. So uh, this can be um, routers or any other small devices that you might have that may possibly be running a piece of free software or even a full Linux kernel or a smaller version of the Linux kernel like um, uh, projects like uh, UC Linux and other things, which are generally licensed under a free software license. Um, but a lot of times there's uh, issues here. So uh, does anyone know what this is? OK. Um, so back in 2004, Mattel decided to come out with this video player contraption thing. And uh, the exciting thing about this is it actually runs, in, uh, it runs uh, uh, UC Linux. So um, this is the, my first dive into the embedded world, was uh, I re finding one of these for like $10 at a flea market. Someone had a whole box of them. They were a complete failure because they used these proprietary uh, video cartridges. Um, but the awesome thing here was you could actually get, um, while it wasn't flashable or updatable, you could still get a, like a serial console on it and play around with it. Um, there's a few hacks and things, but the problem here is, uh, uh, this device, uh, the, the manufacturer violated uh, the, the GPL in various ways. Uh, one of them was they didn't include uh, they didn't include any written offer for source in it. Uh, nowhere in the user manual or the original uh, the original packaging didn't indicate that there was any piece of uh, uh, free software or software license in the GPL. Uh, which I'll, uh, it also uh, the, the software wasn't available anywhere. I think someone managed to actually get the software out of them, but it took a bunch of work. And what they've released wasn't the complete uh, corresponding source code. Uh, so it, it left out um, uh, so the bootloader didn't have any licensing information. So there's no copyright to indicate what it was licensed under. Uh, in the root of the tarball, there was no copying uh, file. Uh, the only indication of the licenses used were the ones attached to, uh, to UC Linux in that tarball. And the directions, of course, wouldn't necessarily work unless you tried to guess which tool chain you needed to compile it, which is a huge problem. So um, uh, as I'm sure we're all aware, free software is, is everywhere. I mean, mo everyone in this room most likely has a, a cell phone, right? I'm sure. Uh, so. Um, uh, it's everywhere. It's in controllers. Um, a lot of uh, you know metro stations might use it in terminals and things. Um, so it's 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 generally everywhere. Um, and a lot of these smart devices that you buy off the shelf might most likely is running some sort of free software. But most people would would never know that. Uh, generally, it's not indicated anywhere that it's running any type of free software. There's no written offer for sources, which is sadly the most popular 
the written offer for sources seems to be the most popular way that they go about dis uh, distributing the software, but uh, generally they don't uh, they don't follow up with it, or what they distribute is not really that. Crazy. So um, yeah, I have already covered. Sorry about that. Uh, so the problems, yeah. So uh, I would say the embedded world is one of the larger bodies of uh, GPL violations. Um, I mean, they're. Uh, I, I, w I said largest before, but it, I wouldn't. I would say it's the larger body of violations that come up. Um, probably, um, I would say JavaScript is probably becoming more of an issue, um, but uh, I won't get into that. Uh, so, I've, yeah, I already covered the missing components. So, a lot of times, um, every uh, OEM or uh, vendor who distributes a product generally will fork have their own internal fork of U-boot that will only work for that particular device. And a lot of times, they omit this uh, from their source release. So they'll include the sources for the kernel and maybe BusyBox and a few other components here and there. But they will not actually include U the U-boot sources, which is uh, quite critical because in a lot of cases, uh, well, it's, in, it's licensed in the GPLv2, so uh, that's a problem. So um, the project that I work on is called the uh, Libri CMC project, which um, uh, is a GNU, embedded GNU Linux distribution for routers and other types of embedded devices. Um, and it's a uh, fully free software, meaning that um, we don't include any non-free components or binary blobs um, in, in the distribution. It's a, it's a fork of uh, OpenWRT. Um, again, we just remove all the non-components in OpenWRT, but we also do some, some fixes here and there um, as well. Um, so both, of course, use uh, build root, um, open, uh, what we base op uh, off uh, OpenWRT um, is a heavily forked and kind of an older version of, of build root, but um, uh, uh, build root is just a, a, a build system, um, which I'll try to get to later. Um, so, um, so yeah, the other thing of the, with the project is we want um, we try to set uh, certain terms when we work with OEMs. Um, about certain requirements that we would like, like um, trying to, uh, we, we try to encourage OEMs to uh, include the complete corresponding sources with the device when they ship it, um, because of the fact that it would uh, relieve them of needing to keep the sources around for uh, up to three years from the, you know, the sale of that device. Uh, not to mention you create a possible violation issue when you, uh, if the person decides to resell that, that device. Um, so with this, it, if you go to resell the device, you could at least resell. You could at least include the source disk with it, um, and and should be okay unless you update the software. So um, uh, some of the things that we want to try to correct, um, I'll get to. Hopefully, this will make sense in a minute. Um, so the uh, one of the things that again um, we want to try to solve is um, there's almost every OEM has their own version of U-boot. Um, so one of the things that we want to try to do is consolidate all of those versions of U-Boot for all the targets that we actually support um, so that it will, you know, essentially be part of what we maintain um, with uh, of Libri CMC. Um, so that, uh, uh, so yeah, the, uh, oh, damn it, that doesn't, sorry. Um, Uh, yeah, so um, one of the, th the problems that we've set out to solve is the fact that um, compliance is a huge problem and there's a lot of, uh, you know, gotchas here and there. And a lot of the tool, si uh, the systems that these uh, OEMs are using, um, they generally have vague instructions for compliance if they even mention anything about compliance in the first place and what, their ob what your obligations are. So um, what I set out to, to do um, with, with the with this talk and uh, proof of concept that I'll be showing in a few minutes is uh, we, uh, the project itself should actually try to uh, uh, tr uh, try to help uh, mitigate some of those issues and create an example for uh, for be, uh, a, an example that an OEM could use to be compliant with uh, uh, with their obligations. Uh, so. Uh, Make CC uh, make CCS disk is not necessarily a tool. It's more or less just a, um, uh, make files that are integrated into our, our version of, of build root, or um, which is a fork and a fork of a build root. But the idea is that um, it will automatically generate um, 
and after you well, so after you build the, the desired image that you want, what you can do is run make CCS disk, and what it will do is it will um, it'll create a clean uh, source tree. So it'll recheck. Um, there's several different ways I'm going to work out to to do this. Um, the cleaner way would be to uh, recheck out all of the. So what we do right now, it's it's just a it's a really loose demo, but um, we check out the source tree. Um, in it, we will we put in our download directory, which includes all the source tarballs that we downloaded, and uh, then it packages up. Um, there's also um, some documentation um, templates. So what it will do is it will replace um, uh, the the target that we're building for, or the the router that we'd be building for. Um, possibly OEM information is what we're going to allow in it. And um, the idea is to have other templates that would come together for target-specific documentation. So this is done on the fly. So then that way, um, we don't have to worry about documentation and things. So this, this whole thing will, and then it, of course, generates the new ISO image with what I just said all packaged up in a nice way that you could actually burn the disk and it'd be ready for distribution with the product. Um, I'm going to skip over the other stuff. I'm going to try to do the demo real quick, if that's OK. I have like five minutes, right? Yep. OK, sorry. Oh. Well, hopefully I can do it. OK, hopefully it works. Oh, man. Hold this. Promising. I'm sorry. No, okay. Um, all right. Of course, it doesn't work. Um, I know like CCS this would work. It is rough around the edges. And I can also show a demo after the fact when we have more time. I. Okay, maybe we don't have enough time for this. Um, is there any questions while this is uh, going exactly? Uh, any questions? Comments? Uh, uh, okay, that's a good thing. It didn't output any errors. Okay. Um, so uh, if we go and, uh, where is it? I, I can't mount that right now. Um, okay. I go and I, should be an ISO image. Ah, there we go. So if I go and I open that up, um, there's a raise me. Um, not, the text is not final yet, but um, there'll be areas, which I'll show you in a second, um, where it shows uh, where certain things like this right here, we had a string. Um, the idea is um, uh, we'd have a bunch of documentation templates for different things, um, so that's automatically generated. Um, yeah, so, and then this source tarball is everything that we needed to build for this target. And the target, I think, is the GL AR300M, I believe we, J 
just built for, I don't have a big screen to read that, okay. Um, uh, but I think you get the point. <laughs> so uh, how many, uh, three, minutes. three minutes. Okay, so uh, if I can hold this for a second. Okay, so, all right, so if we go to um, target CCS disk files, um, we'd have other templates, this is just a roof, re uh, oh wait, let's do no, uh, more. So as you see here, um, this is just a basic thing where it will go and it will replace uh, certain things like we'd have the vendor, the target, um, and other things would be all automated. Um, uh, but I'm hoping that this, if there's more interest, the idea is this, uh, using, uh, having these tools will make it easier for OEMs to, to be compliant. It'll provide a, a pristine example or close to pristine example. Um, and the fact that um, it will save so much time. It, uh, this saves me probably um, anywhere from 30 minutes to four hours, depending on if I have to rewrite all the documentation and everything to, you know, technically be compliant. So um, is there any questions? Okay. So uh, why didn't you use Yocto, or I saw you had a Yacto, yes. which I assume you, you can use that to generate the exact same thing. And um, so they don't, it doesn't, add, unless there's someone who is working on like um, the, the recipes for that, um, the, uh, it doesn't automatically generate um, a tarball that's com that would have everything that would allow you to, to be compliant. So it doesn't generate documentation. Um, and it does not include all of, it doesn't package everything up. The Yocto, the, uh, the documentation that they have just says that you pretty much need to tar up a specific directory um, and their focus is only on, um, on, on distri distributing only the GTPL parts, not the, the, the necessarily the whole thing. Um, so a lot of companies seem to want to just leave out any of the, they only care about the obligations of the copy left licenses, they don't care necessarily about including the, 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 um, uh, uh, the lax licensed uh, programs. Um, whereas ideally, I would like everything to be included that was used. And a lot of times, uh, the other problem is in the documentation, they, they say that you don't need to include the tool chain stuff and the sources for that. But the problem with that is a lot of uh, embedded components require a specific tool chain. So if you don't have that specific tool chain, you can't build it. And the idea behind this whole thing is that all of, the idea is that all these types of tools, so build root, you know, Yocto and Open Embedded um, and others should, um, should definitely be having this as part of their, uh, they should definitely care about compliance because a lot of companies just do the bare minimum when in some cases that's not always enough. Uh, I think they do, but I'll talk to you all. They do, okay. Oh, sorry, yeah. sorry about that. Um, Okay. When was the last time you bought a router and it, you came with a CD? <laughs> they don't ship CDs with routers anymore. Um, uh, is, uh, so um, th uh, there is one, uh, several OEMs that are shipping CDs with their routers. Um, one of them is, I think, Penguin. He's in the, the audience. Um, so um, every router that they have shipped um, with Libre CMC has included a, a CCS disk. Um, it just wasn't automated before. Do you think this is something that uh, the, the companies can integrate in their build system so that they keep verifying that they are able to uh, produce the, the complete corresponding code um, so within their integration system? Um, well, it, it's going to all depend on what build system they're using and how their build system is laid out to accommodate that. Um, it could be done, but the the point is, I don't, I haven't seen enough doing it. I might be wrong. Like I, like you said, there's there are th things, but I've I've tried to do my due di diligence before this. But I want to, I would like to see more c companies going up, um, uh, above and beyond just their minimum obligation because it would be so much easier, and um, the fact that this saves so much time and headache. I was just going to say that I work for a company that does that 
we, every night we, we check our source release builds. Um, that's just quite difficult if you're building Java, because half the time Java doesn't build itself. Um, but, <laughs> but you know, it can be done. It just requires work. <laughs>